This is the fifth in a series of 11 videos designed to assist medical students and non-specialist doctors to become confident at assessing patients with eye problems. We've already established how to take a history and test the visual acuity and are now working our way through the structures of the eye in a conventional anatomical way from front to back, starting with lids and lashes and ending with the optic disc and retina. This video is to demonstrate how to examine the conjunctiva of your patient. The conjunctiva is a mucous membrane which not only lines the white of the eye, the so-called bulbar conjunctiva, but is also reflected onto the inside of the eyelids as well, the so-called tarsal conjunctiva. As doctors, we're all trained to assess for anemia by pulling down the lower lid to look for pallor of the conjunctivae. And that's where we're going to start our examination of the conjunctiva in our patient. Using a simple pen torch, we pull down the lower lid and we can see that this patient's bulbar conjunctiva is white and healthy with no discharge. Her inferior tarsal conjunctiva is pink and healthy. There are no follicles or bumps on the tarsal conjunctiva. We can then get the patient to look one direction and apart from a very benign conjunctival nevus, this patient's lateral conjunctiva is completely healthy, as is her medial conjunctiva. We can then get the patient to look down and just by gently lifting up the upper lid, we can see most of the superior conjunctiva. The only thing we haven't done here is to look underneath the eyelid at the superior tarsal conjunctiva. This is a rather uncomfortable procedure and should be reserved for patients in whom you suspect a foreign body or severe allergy and doesn't need to be part of a routine structural eye exam. Presuming that your patient has normal healthy conjunctivae, you can conclude in your communication to fellow eye professionals or in your case notes that this patient's conjunctiva is white, there is no discharge and there are no follicles. And that's all there is to it. There is no fundoscopy required and we can go on to the next structure which is the cornea and we're going to learn how to examine that in the next video.